All right, and now I'm gonna have to frame this. This is awesome. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and today's video is one that I am probably more proud of than any other video that I have created to date. And that is because we are celebrating my channel surpassing over 100,000 subscribers. That is absolutely insane. And to celebrate, we're going to be doing a YouTube classic, which is we are going to be unboxing this package, which contains my YouTube creator award, my silver play button for surpassing 100,000 subscribers. And as a thank you to each and every one of you who are directly responsible for me winning this award, we are going to be answering some of your most asked questions in a Q&A, more of a casual style video where you can get to know me a little bit better and we can celebrate together. So the first thing I want to do before we unbox this and get into the questions is I want to thank you. I am beyond appreciative of each and every one of you for taking the time over the last 10 years since I started this channel of hitting that big ol' red subscribe button and adding yourself to the list of people who see my videos each and every week. It really, really humbles me and it makes me feel so good that I am providing you with interesting, exciting, and entertaining information all about the joys of coin collecting, precious metals investing, personal finance, and even expanding now into cryptocurrency and other alternative investments. And if you are somehow watching this video and are not yet a subscriber, well, hit that big old red subscribe button so you can be thanked in the next video uh, where I hit a milestone and get, I guess, the gold play button for a million. Well, we'll see if that ever happens, but for now, I am so proud and excited to celebrate this. So let's get unboxing. Okay, so I am beyond excited for this because I have watched so many freaking unboxing videos of these creator awards. And now, with this slice, I am going to join the ranks of YouTubers with 100,000 subscribers and an awesome video unboxing their award. Here we go. The last, the last slice of them all. All right, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Here we go. Oh my God, I can hardly contain myself. Okay. Oh, they're slow rolling it for us. Here we go. You ready? You ready? Okay. Ha! Huh. First off, anybody that's watched any videos of unboxings, they know about this card. Congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We are honored to take part in recognizing your achievement and want the experience to be exceptional. This award is inspected and packaged with great care by Rick. Rick is like the most famous guy related to YouTube because he inspects every one of these awards. All right, and now I'm gonna have to frame this. This is awesome. Wow. Do you remember your first subscriber, your 100th, your 1,000th subscriber? Chances are you do, and we know that you'll definitely remember your 100,000th subscriber. So keep creating, keep building. We can't wait to see what you'll do next, and we're here to support you along the way. And who knows, when you reach your millionth subscriber, we may just write to you and ask, do you remember your 100,000th subscriber? Sincerely, Susan Wojcicki, CEO of YouTube. Holy cow. Ha, I am so proud of this. And here it is. And here it freaking is. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, let's get this box out of the way. Oh, man. We're going to take the plastic off. I'm afraid. Okay, I'm getting my white gloves. That's what's happening right now. I'm getting my white gloves. All right, I got my white gloves on, my coin collecting gloves. But these are going to be used for my silver play button. Because, I mean, hey, right? First of all, who is more appropriate to receive a silver creator award than the silver picker himself. Look at that. Oh my lord. Presented to silver picker for passing 100,000 subscribers. YouTube. Let's check out the back. I feel like no one ever shows the back. All right, it's just got a place for uh, hanging it up on your wall. And oh, if you think I'm not hanging this up on my wall, you have got another thing coming. Holy cow, look at that. I'm just gonna let it sit here for a second. We're gonna check it out. Really enjoy it together. All 
right, so let's start with our first question. Our first question comes from I Like Numismatics 1940, and he asks simply, what is my favorite American coin? Well, that's an easy answer because my favorite American coin is the US trade dollar. Now, for those of you who don't know, the trade dollar is an incredibly interesting coin with an incredibly interesting history. It's essentially a coin that was minted in the late 1800s specifically to be used outside of the United States for trade with East Asia. The reason why it's particularly cool is aside from the fact that it's rare, it's valuable, it's a big chunky silver coin with a beautiful design that has an interesting piece of history attached to it, well also once they made their way over to Asia, all of the Chinese and other Asian merchants would inspect the coins and then put their own unique chop mark or stamp on it to show that it was indeed authentic and they accepted it. So a lot of these coins have all these really interesting Chinese characters stamped directly into the coins. And even though some people say that that actually devalues it, for me, it increases the value so much more because of the interesting historical value. Now, before we move on to the next question, you may have noticed that I am wearing a new piece of merch. Check this out. This is my own design and I am super proud of it. I've got it in t-shirts, I've got it in hoodies, all sorts of stuff. It's the breakfast of champions. You see, it's got the American Silver Eagle stack. That's right, silver stack, pancake stack, breakfast of champions. If you know, you know. Anyway, I created this design specifically to celebrate sort of the growth of my channel and as a thank you to each and every one of you who has been begging for new merch designs. Well, here it is, but this merch design is only going to be available for one month. I'm keeping it reserved just for my like most hardcore fans that are watching this video and the several other videos that are gonna come out where I show off this shirt. But for the most part, I am only going to keep this live for one month and uh, if you're interested in getting yourself a t-shirt or a hoodie with this incredible Breakfast of Champions design by yours truly, well, click on the links below and grab yourself one today before the promotion ends. So anyway, let's get back to the next question. Okay, the next question on the list was, what is my number one tip for new coin collectors? Well, since that's actually my favorite question, I'm going to put that at the end of the video, make y'all sweat it out and watch the rest of the video. You know, if I wanna get to a million, I gotta get my view time up, right? Well, so stay tuned for that, but the next question that was asked that I am gonna answer right now is, what is the best thing to put in the ends of coin tubes to keep your coins from rattling around? Well, my cheeky answer is coins. You know, if you're gonna fill up coin rolls and coin tubes, well, you should fill them up with coins. That's the best way to keep them from rattling around. These coin tubes are designed specifically for a certain number of that denomination coin, so once you put in the full amount, there's gonna be no rattling. So obviously that's the best move, but otherwise, I've seen people put everything from foam to pieces of cloth to pieces of paper, newspaper, uh, paper towel, all sorts of other things. Frankly, anything you put in there that's not specifically designed for coins is going to have some risk of reacting with the coins themselves. If you're lucky, it might tone them a beautiful rainbow toning color, but if you're unlucky, it could leach out chemicals and actually ruin the coins. So I would say either leave nothing and keep them upright, or for a short period of time, if you're moving them around, you know, put anything in there that's not gonna scratch the coins. A piece of a cut up old sock? I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments what you guys use. The next two questions are what are my top 10 pieces of bullion that are currently in my stack and what are the top 10 coins or pieces of bullion that are not yet in my stack that I want? Well, I'm gonna sort of uh, shorten that question a little bit because I don't know if I've got top 10 of uh, the coins in my stack or the top 10 that I wanna get, but I'll tell you some of my favorite things in my precious metal stack include my 10 ounce vintage Engelhard bar, all of my American Silver Eagles, I absolutely love them. And then all of my foreign unique gold. I have some gold from Japan, some gold from Israel, some gold from England, the US, all sorts. I really love my gold stack. Now, what do I wanna get? Well, I'm more interested in coins because the bullion that I get, I don't really care about what the bullion is, as long as it's good quality and authentic. So American Silver Eagles, Philharmonicers, Britannias, all those are fine for me. I don't really have much of, a, of, a, of an emotional connection to those. So whatever comes my way that's a good price, I'm gonna buy it. In terms of coins though, I do have a few that are on my list. Of course, everything I'm missing in my British Mandate of Palestine coin set. I have started working on a Philippines coin set, but I haven't really done much work on that, so I'm interested in getting some of the bigger silver coins from that series. And for my US type set, I am very, very excited to get the Seated Liberty dollar coins that I do not yet have, 
And also, as I build towards my US gold type set, I really, really, really want to get my hands on some of those $1 gold coins. I think they're super cool, such an interesting piece of history, and I don't have them. And best of all, they're not that expensive. So I'm really excited to get my hands on those. Next question is, are Nui coins, definitely not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but are Nui coins good f for future investments or are they just overly expensive gimmicks? Well. In my opinion, I think that for the most part, they're just overly expensive gimmicks. Now, gimmicks has a negative connotation to that word, and I'm not quite ready to say that they're gimmicks in the sense that maybe they're like taking advantage of their customers. I definitely don't think that. I think they're beautiful coins, really, really high quality, and they really are, are really fun to collect. And if that's your goal, I think there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to talking about an investment, I don't think that they are going to hold their value very well. There are too many of them, too many different types, and they're very niche. And most, most bullion stackers are not really interested in paying a, a 10x premium or a 5x premium over the value of the silver just for their bullion stack. Nui coins are really for collectors, people that want to display their coins, people that really just want to enjoy their bullion for the beauty. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but just know that when you buy them, there's a good likelihood that you're not going to be able to recoup that premium when you resell it. Next question is, what is your number one biggest mistake as a YouTuber? Well, that's also a really, really good question, so I am also going to save that one for the end of the video. Ooh, next question is a good one. It is, if I had to get rid of my entire coin collection and my entire silver and gold stack, what's the one coin that I would keep and why? Well, that's a pretty easy one for me. It's my $20 double eagle gold coin. And I got that from my great aunt before she passed away. She gave me that coin personally, and it was something that she saved from many, many, many years ago and gave it to me. So it has sentimental value, and frankly, it's a giant gold coin that has tremendous monetary value as well. So for those two reasons, easy slam dunk, that's what I would keep. But please, don't make me give away my entire coin collection in silver stack. Next two questions are similar, so I'll answer them one after the other. The first is, what is the best place to buy coin grab bags? And the second is, what is the best place to buy cheap silver bullion and gold bullion? Well, for coin grab bags, the number one best place you can go to buy good ones is on eBay. Not, of course, of course you don't wanna go to eBay for the best coin grab bags because for the most part, they're all scams. If somehow you missed that series on my channel, you should check out a couple of the videos I have here in the card above showing me opening up coin grab bags from eBay. They are not good. Although, on my eBay grab bag journey, I did find one reputable seller and they were absolutely fantastic. So much so that I continued to buy from them and even went to their physical store in Jewett City, Connecticut. And of course, I am talking about the wonderful husband and wife duo, Deanna and John of Main Street Rare Coins in Jewett City, Connecticut. They are fantastic, salt of the earth people. I cannot recommend them enough. They give amazing deals and give you incredible value for your money. If you're interested, go to their website, MainStreetRareCoins.com, or give them a call. Yes, on the actual phone. Give them a call, tell them I sent you, and they will definitely make you an amazing grab bag at basically whatever value you're looking for. So hands down, best place to go for grab bags. Now, for cheap silver. That's a great segue because the best place to go for cheap silver is to your local coin store or bullion dealer. Make a relationship with the people in your community. Support your community by going to your local coin store. You support them and they will support you. They will give you good deals. They will give you real silver. You're not gonna have to worry about buying phony baloney stuff off the internet. So you'll get good stuff, good quality, good service, good recommendations, and good prices. Now, I know that not all of you have a local coin store, so there is an alternative. And that is going to www.sdbullion.com slash silverpicker, where I give you my best recommendations for silver and gold bullion, and they have the lowest prices that I have found on any bullion dealer online. They're also great people. I've interviewed them. You can check out the video here where I interviewed uh, one of the co-founders and one of the other higher up employees there, and it is fantastic. Plus, if you make your first purchase with my link, I get a little bit of a kickback, not too much, but it is still nice. So in any case, check it out, www.sdbullion.com slash silverpicker. Support a great company, support a great channel, and everybody wins. Should you get your coin collection graded? Well, that depends on the nature of your coin collection, doesn't it? If you've got a bunch of common date circulated coins, 
Don't get them graded. It's gonna be a huge waste of money. You're gonna send your coins out for grading, pay the shipping fees, pay the grading fees, pay the shipping fees back, and the coin that you get graded is gonna end up being worth far less than what you spent on it. If you wanna get common date graded coins, let some other sucker, sucker pay the price and buy those coins already graded off of eBay or something. But don't grade common date circulated coins. It is not worth it. But if you have some really, really high-end specimens, really rare dates, key dates, better dates, whatever, or something interesting, or an error coin, or something that you really think needs to have that grade or that notation on that capsule, well, in that case, then send those coins out for grading. Because if you take that bet and you end up getting a really, really good grade, it can increase the value of that coin exponentially. There are some uh, Morgan dollars, for example, Carson City Morgan dollars, that if you don't have graded and they're in kind of you know, good condition, maybe they're worth $750. That's fantastic for a single silver dollar, right? But let's say you hit that MS60 mark, it might go from $750 to $5,000. And then if you get MS61 or MS62, it might go up to $10,000. But then when you get into those higher grades, it can jump from $10,000 at MS62 to $100,000 at MS65. And MS66, well, then you're talking about over half a million dollars. So it is definitely worth getting some of those kind of coins graded. Oh, and only get your coins graded from reputable coin grading companies like PCGS, NGC, maybe Annex, and maybe CGC. Everything else, basically, avoid at all costs. Next question is, what got me into the hobby of coin collecting? Well, there's two answers to that question. The first and the most basic one is my dad. My dad started teaching me about coin collecting when I was a little kid, and that was one of the hobbies we had together. We had a lot of hobbies together, and stamp collecting was another one. We used to build models, and we did all sorts of fun stuff together when I was a kid, but I really liked coin collecting because it taught me all about geography, and my dad has been on lots and lots of trips to all sorts of interesting countries, and he used to tell me all these tales of the different places he visited, from Egypt to Japan, all sorts of other places, and I loved hearing those stories, and seeing the coins really sort of solidified those stories he told me. So I really loved it from a young age. I, of course, also liked the monetary value. But like many childhood hobbies, it sort of fell by the wayside by the time I got to high school. And I got it reignited when I was in college by a good friend of mine who's also my roommate. His name is Josh. And he is the one who got me back into coins. And he got me back into it from the business perspective. He was buying coins, precious metals, gold, silver, all that kind of stuff. And he was making money hand over fist. And we were college students, so we were broke. So seeing him come home with wads of $100 bills, I kid you not, was just mind blowing. So I begged him to teach me the business and that summer instead of getting a normal job or an internship, I went around on the garage sale circuit, started buying coins, started buying precious metals, bracelets, jewelry, uh, cutlery, platters, all sorts of stuff, anything I could get my hands on that was gold or silver. And I started learning and making videos about it. Yeah, I started making videos over 10 years ago, which is bananas. Um, but he was the inspiration initially, he's what got me into it, and then of course I took it off on my own and continued uh, forging my own path here on YouTube. So a big shout out to my dad and to Josh for planting the seeds that eventually got me here to this 100,000 subscriber milestone. Along the same lines, the next question is, how has the hobby changed since when I started to what it is today? Well, there have been a bunch of different changes, but the biggest one I would say has to do with social media and the internet. Of course social media existed and the internet existed back when I started collecting coins, but it was a totally different ball game. Back then, first of all, I'm not even sure if Instagram existed at all, uh, but on YouTube, there wasn't that much coin collecting content out there. I was definitely one of the first on YouTube to start putting out coin collecting content, precious metals content, all that kind of stuff. And I'm really proud of having helped sort of forge the way uh, with this community along with many other uh, great YouTubers that are still on the platform today. So right now, the biggest thing is that if you want to start coin collecting, you can go on YouTube or you can look on TikTok or Instagram and you can get a plethora of information. And that's not even to mention all of the resources online that exist today. But you really can get like an expert, expert uh, schooling on the hobby and on the uh, investment side of precious metals just from your computer screen. And that was not something that you could do very easily back when I started. So that is a huge, huge, huge benefit. One of the other big changes that I noticed is where coin collecting happens. And that also has to do with the internet. All right, the last two questions, the ones you've all been waiting for. What is my biggest YouTube mistake? And what is my number one tip for new coin collectors? Let's start with my uh, biggest mistake so we don't end on a sour note. Well, 
thankfully I haven't been involved in really any big controversies while I've been on YouTube. I'm not one of these like drama YouTube channels. I really just like to create content that's fun, that's helpful, informative, entertaining, educational, all that kind of stuff. And I try and stay out of all that drama. It's not for me. But I will say that my biggest mistake is that early on, when I first started making YouTube videos, you know, 10 years ago and started to gain some traction, I got approached by my first sponsors. And I was just shocked that anybody wanted to pay me to promote anything on the internet. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And back then it was for so little money. It was like $100 or something. But I was so excited about it. And to be frank, I didn't really understand what it all meant. And I wasn't really, uh, really, I was kind of naive a little bit, I think. And I took some sponsorships from some companies that weren't that great. You know, not anything that was like a total scam, you know, like literally like stealing people's money, but things that I today would not promote, things that I think are not good deals, things that I think are uh, better left aside by our community. But thankfully in the last, I don't know, five plus years, I haven't taken a single sponsor that I didn't approve of. So I'm really proud of that. But uh, yeah, I guess my biggest mistake is in the early years taking sponsorships from some companies that uh, I wouldn't have today. But I hope you guys forgive me for that. And thankfully those were on videos that got barely any views anyway. So that's all in the past. All the sponsors that I take today, I carefully vet and they are legit good companies that offer good services, good products. And uh, I'm fortunate enough today that I have a big enough following, big enough channel that uh, I can be pretty particular about who I get to sponsor and uh, who I accept and who I uh, kick to the curb and say, no thanks buddy, I'm not promoting your garbage. And now the question you've all been waiting for, what is my number one tip to new coin collectors? Well, since it's my 100,000 subscriber special and it's my channel and I feel like I get to make the rules, so I'm giving more than one tip because one tip is not enough for new collectors. The number one tip is the most basic one though and that is don't listen to the hype, collect what you like. There is no better way to get excited about a hobby than doing something you like, not just sort of following what other people say are the rules, right? So if you're into coins from the Netherlands, just because coins from the Netherlands may not be like the most popular uh, coin collecting series ever, doesn't mean you shouldn't collect them. Maybe it's special to you. So collect those coins. Just because people say American silver eagles and Canadian maple leaves are the best bullion out there, well, we can debate that. But you know, a lot of people will say those are the, you know, American silver eagles are the only bullion you should really buy. It's the only thing that, that's you know, really gonna hold its premium, et cetera. And even though I do think there is a good argument for that, don't start there. Start with what you like. That is the best way to get into the hobby and make sure that you really enjoy it and don't get turned off by uh, being forced into a, a, into a box that you don't wanna be in. Now, on the flip side, don't spend a ton of money at the beginning because you don't know what you're doing. That's the reality. You have no clue what you're doing at the beginning and if you spend a lot of money, you're just gonna end up regretting a lot of that because you're gonna have bought stuff that's not really worth the price. And you may not even know your own collecting style yet. You'll buy a bunch of stuff that, while it might be worth the price and it might be worth the value, you don't really care about it in a few months because you hadn't really figured out what you wanted to collect. So start out small. Don't buy high-end graded coins when you first start. Don't buy super expensive key dates. Start with albums, start with folders, start with series that make you excited that you're really into and buy the more common date coins for a few bucks here and there. Buy the silver, the, great, the, the not graded stuff, the you know, non-key date stuff and enjoy yourself, right? Let's say you've got a budget of 100, 200, $300. Don't buy one $300 coin. Enjoy, live a little, buy a few different things. Maybe buy some paper money, maybe buy some bullion, maybe buy some foreign coins, some US coins. Get a mixture of things that you're into and slowly but surely as you learn more, you'll be able to refine your collecting taste and pick what you want and then you can start investing the real big bucks. Now, my final, final, final suggestion is go for typesets. That's my personal preference and it's definitely my bias. I think typesets are the best way that you can get into collecting as a newbie because it has so much variety. It's like a one-two punch of all sorts of different exciting things about coin collecting in one album. So my US typeset, for instance, has literally dozens and dozens and dozens of different unique coins throughout all of US's history. And it is so much fun to look at. It is so much fun to build. And it's not just sort of like the same drudgery of seeing the same coin in a date set in a row, right? There's a lot of people that collect that and if you're a really, really serious numismatist, you might wanna get into that. But at the beginning, try and go for the variety, enjoy, collect what you like, 
and see what is out there because that is what's gonna set you on the path for success. So that's that. Thank you so much for watching my 100,000 subscriber question and answer special video. Now, I wanna thank you watching right now. Yes, you watching right now because I assume you are subscribed and you are one of those 100,000 people that got me here. Lots of people will say like, man, I couldn't have done it without you and they're being figurative. In this case, literally, I could not have done this without you. I could not have gotten to 100,000 subscribers without each and every one of you watching right now. So thank you so much. This really, really means a lot to me. I have put in literally thousands of hours in building this channel over the past 10 years. That is a crazy thought. And really, this feels like an Oscar to me. This feels like the best award anyone could ever possibly give me. I am so proud of it, and it really does make me feel good for having put in all that time and effort building this channel and providing you guys with content about coin collecting, precious metals investing, personal finance, and all sorts of other fun stuff. So really, thank you so much for helping me get here. And if by some chance you're not subscribed, well, it's time to click that big old red subscribe button, and then I can thank you on my way to one million. Well, in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike, so stay tuned, and until then, as always, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. If you guys watching right now are not yet a patron, but you want to be part of my personal private Discord server where we talk about coin collecting, precious metals investing, and really just goof off and have a great time, it is the best coins and precious metals private community on the internet. So if you want to get access to that Discord, please consider supporting my Patreon campaign. The links are below. Can't wait to see you there.